Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Research and Innovation Days Stream the STEAM session on gender equality for STEM studies and careers. My name is Eddie Grenmeyer. I'm a project and pedagogical officer for the Science Education Department of European SchoolNet, the network of 34 ministries of education, which coordinates, amongst other things, Scientix and STEAMIT project. Both these projects focus on connecting policymakers, teachers, researchers, and industry partners for the promotion of STEAM education in Europe. I'm very grateful to be invited to moderate this session for you today. Uh, as I also work with the Career Advisors Network, a network that co uh, collaborates teachers and industry partners uh, from primary and secondary school students to get them really excited about STEM because you have to start early. But first, we'd like to hear from you. So tell us about you. Look at the screen. There will be a Slido question for you to tell us. So scan the code, go online. And you can tell us what type of organization do you work for? There's no need for a name. Uh, you don't need to name the institution. Just tell us whether you work at a secondary school, a university, a business or a startup, a research organization, or something entirely different. And while you answer that question, I'm very pleased to introduce Ms. Katia Rappel. She's the head of the unit on democracy and European values in the Directorate General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission. Katia, thank you very much. It's nice to see you. Can you tell us a little bit more about why we're organizing this session today? Thank you, Eddie, and good morning. Welcome also from my side. Uh, yes, I'm the head of unit for democracy and European values, and I also have the pleasure to have a sector in my unit which is in charge of promoting gender equality in research and innovation, which organized today's session. Why did we organize the session? Well, earlier this year, the European Commission adopted the European Strategy for Universities with the main goal to support universities to adapt to current challenges like the green and digital transitions. To tackle these challenges, it's important to draw on the entire diverse talent pool of Europe, mobilizing all their knowledge and expertise. However, women are persistently underrepresented in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, so-called STEM fields, that are crucial, however, for digital and green transitions. Less than a third of doctoral graduates in engineering are women. In the field of information communication technologies, the number is even lower. Only 22% of doctoral graduates in ICT are women. This is not only holding back Europe's research and innovation potential, it also hampers businesses who cannot find the ICT and engineering professionals they need, as President von der Leyen noted recently in her speech on the State of the Union. We believe that a STEAM approach, which embeds arts, creative and critical thinking in traditional STEM educations, hence the A in STEAM, um, this STEAM approach can have a positive impact on the attractiveness of STEM studies and careers for women and girls. We thus aim with the European University Strategy Action to co-create a manifesto for gender inclusive, inclusive STEAM education and careers, together, of course, with relevant organizations and networks from education, research, and the private sector, and of course, the member states. The purpose of our session now is to discuss how best to support women and girls from early and higher education on all the way through STEM careers. Our speakers and our moderator are experts in these different stages. And I look forward to hearing their insights and ideas, also in view of possible actions and commitments in a STEM, STEM manifesto. Eddie, the floor is yours, and I wish you all a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much, Katja. It's been really nice to see you and hear from you. And it's true that this manifesto will address the very important issues of gender representation and diversity in STEAM. But for our audience who may not, or some members of our audience who may not quite be familiar with what STEAM is as a concept. So what's the A in STEAM? We know STEM, um, but what is the A? It's generally understood, as Ketcha mentioned, uh, as arts or creative arts, but it's much more than that. You can put it in brackets and all of a sudden A becomes all subjects. 
it's no longer just arts. It's, as you said, critical thinking. It's other topics like humanity, social sciences, or even sports. You can integrate STEM teaching with every other topic to make it a learning experience in the real world. Now, the STEAM approach offers great opportunity for gender balance and diversity in education and in careers. So we'll talk to our speakers today, our panelists. We have uh, Ms. Panagiota Polikarpu. She's the co-founder of Girls in STEAM Academy. We have Mr. Melio Skades. He's the work package lead and ombudsman for diversity and gender equality at Enhance, the European Universities, Universities of Technology Alliance. And we have Ms. Renée Vanneke. She's the Director General at Eura Technologies. But before we hear from them, let's take a look at the poll. So if we could have the answer to the question, we will see what our audience is made of. Oh, so we can see we have a lot of university, uh, small enterprises and NGOs, research organizations. So a lot, a lot, a lot of thinkers, some European Commission coming quite close behind public research. So here we have a bunch of very smart people looking forward to a great discussion on how to make STEAM gender balanced. Now, welcome to our speakers. Thank you very much for being with us. Let's take a quick round of introduction for our audience. So maybe we'll start with you, Panagiota. Of course. Uh, hello all, thank you all for uh, this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am Panagata Polikarpu, coming from Cyprus, representing Girls in STEAM Academy, which is a non-profit initiative that aims to get teenage girls to meet uh, STEAM careers through fun and educational activities, and of course, a lot of networking with women uh, role models. I also work as a gender specialist at the Cyprus University of Technology, part of the European Alliance that was mentioned. And as you can tell, my interest focus on the topic of equality, diversity, and inclusion. Thank you very much for this brief introduction. Uh, it's great to have you with us today. Meli, do you want to go second? Yes, thank you. And thank you again to the organization team for the invitation. It's a great honor for me to be here representing our alliance and hands. Uh, he hello all. Uh, my name is Melich Özkardeş. I'm the Ombudsman and Work Package Leader for Diversity and Gender Equality at the European University Alliance in Hans. I work at RWTH uh, Aachen University in Germany. That is also one of the uh, seven members of our European Alliance. And as you see and as you hear also, we are an, an alliance of technical universities, universities of technologies. And that's why the topic of today's discussion is very relevant to our fields as well, because we are also working a lot in STEAM fields. And uh, I'm working myself since more than 15 years, 15 years already in the field of diversity. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your introduction. Uh, now let's hear from Kuse. Kuse, how are you? Hi. Hi, I'm happy to be here. I'm Kuse. I'm the managing director of Euratech. So it's a startup campus. We accelerate more than 200 startups each year. We are located in the north of France. And Euratech is a semi-public, semi-private company. So it means and it allows us to offer an accelerator program that is free of charge. So it means we take no equity in the startups and we welcome people from all countries. Uh, so if you have the, you want to settle in our region in France, if your project is really tech, innovative and links to one of our verticals such as robotics, cybersecurity, fintech or property tech, you are most welcome. Thank you very much, Kuse, uh, for this short introduction. So here you have it. We have three speakers from three very different fields, all interested in promoting gender equality in STEM studies and STEM careers. So now that we know a little bit more about you, we'll take a deeper look at the topic. But before we do that, I'd like to remind our audience that you can ask questions for the speakers through the Slido. And we'll try to answer as many of those questions as possible. So you can scan the QR code and go post your questions online. And we'll take a look at your questions later in the session. Uh, you can also vote 
for your favorite questions or the ones that represent best uh, your own questions as well. So remember to do that. All right then. So now let's get into the core of the of the issue. And uh, Hannah Goethe, we'll start with you. You are the co-founder of the Girls in STEAM Academy. And today we discuss STEAM, not just STEM. In your view, what's the added value of a STEAM approach in a more traditional STEM education setting? Of course, um, that's a question actually we get asked a lot, uh, including uh, arts in STEM does not necessarily mean that we include the field of arts only, as mentioned by you, Eddie, but uh, rather an approach that includes um, creativity and innovation in the technical work that is already required in STEM. It expands students' mind beyond technical work by including design thinking, imagination and creativity. And the added value is that mastering STEM alone does not appear to lead to as much a success as mastering STEM in addition to skills commonly fostered in arts and humanities, such as teamwork, uh, communication skills, creativity, and of course, uh, social intelligence. Thank you for that. Yes, it's true that um, we did really look at it in a way to um, integrate all the topics into promoting STEM because STEM does not work in isolation. It works with everything else. And I think creativity is a huge part of it, uh, creativity and imagination. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about the activities that you undertake at the Academy to support gender equality and women role models? Of course, of course. So there are two core pillars that our activities fall under, and uh, these are the two-day program we offer to the girls, to the participants, and the series of benefits they get after they graduate from, from our program. So through the first pillar, uh, the two-day uh, programs, the girls get to meet uh, women role models coming from the field of STEM. We have uh, successful women uh, speakers who share with us their backgrounds, what they're doing in their everyday life, how many times they needed, they had to fail and change careers and try again. So we wanted to capture that there's no one way success for someone's career. And we wanted to promote STEAM career opportunities through these uh, role models. Now, similarly, the girls who graduate from our program get the opportunity to meet other women role models through the podcast the Academy has, which is called She Speaks. And each girl gets to host one woman role model and interview her, having the same exact goal to build a resilience for these young women by bringing them in touch with the wide, uh, wide network of women role models we have, who can also act as mentors for these girls. That's very cool. So role models and mentors, I think there's no better way to get uh, a child, uh, however young, uh, to be excited about a career in STEAM. Uh, indeed, in yes. my own work, we do that a lot as well. Role models are essential. Uh, we have a repository of STEM job profiles available for teachers, which really showcases a lot of diversity, but a lot of extraordinary women who are just so passionate about what they do that you cannot help but feel inspired. Now, exactly. what, thank you. What's, in your opinion, what's the role of schools and universities to attract young women into STEM studies? And how do we ensure that good local practices become sustainable on a wider European level? Okay. Uh, so I'd start with the most challenging role, which is the culture and everyday interactions. And we often see how stereotypes and bias are being multiplied through everyday interactions that the students and teachers have. Therefore, starting from primary schools, when we promote a stereotype, for example, that boys are better in maths just because they're boys, this has a severe uh, after effect of how girls perceive themselves and therefore whether they will follow, for example, career in maths. And similarly, the way we treat girls and women in a male-dominated class affects a lot whether these women will remain in that field. So for example, if in a lecture of a university, only five out of 100 engineers are women, the way they're being treated matters. And of course, this goes vice versa. And now talking about universities, they have a great role, I think, uh, about the efforts they make when attracting students. Uh, for example, we need to ask ourselves questions like, what our promotional materials say about our culture? Is there enough representation when we promote a male-dominated program? 
does the admission committee acknowledge the underrepresentation of a group of people in our pool of students? How do we ensure that discrimination does not affect the selection of students, having in mind not only their gender, but also other social categories, such as age, ethnicity, uh, et cetera? Now, uh, when it comes to the good practices on a, uh, on a wider you know, European level, uh, this, I believe, can be ensured through the partnership for which we have hands-on examples today uh, to, to indicate as a good practice, which is uh, the Horizon Project Gender Smart or the AUT Plus Alliance that is mentioned, which brings together a wide range of consortium of universities across Europe to be committed on promoting inclusive practices, such as the, such as the implementation of an equality plan. So through, through such partnership, partnerships, uh, we ensure that academic institutions build the necessary bones or core, as we call it, that is needed for such a social change and sustainable policies and practices implementation. Therefore, no matter where we are, a lecture, a class at a university, our school, a working environment, we need to prioritize diverse and inclusive and respectful culture and leadership needs to be held accountable over quantifiable measures of performance related to practices for diversity and inclusion. Thank you for that. Yes, I mean, you know, I can only agree that we have to face our own biases uh, in order to promote equality. And to be honest, I do not know where this idea of boys being better at math I'm not good at math, so, you know, <laughs> I cannot support this bias, even with a gun to my head. Thank you very I much, exactly. Panagita. Of course. <laughs> uh, well, I, you. Just want, I just want one final little quick question, um, because we talk about non-STEM subjects and creativity. How do you in, embed non-STEM subjects into your workshops or lessons in general? Uh, and how do they foster women and girls' participation in STEM study mm. and careers? So, of course, our, our workshops that, that are, is offered in the academy, uh, it's more technological. We focus on coding. We teach girls how to code, starting from zero knowledge uh, on, on the, the subject. So we ask girls to build a website that presents their profile and skills, thinking that that website will be sent to an undergraduate school or for them to get a job. So we encourage creativity and we push them to work on their communication skills through, through that workshop, even though it seems so technical. And similarly, we offer a workshop on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, and each team has to work on a startup or a project, or, or a pro prototype, I'm, I'm sorry, that exists that solves a social challenge. And they should break down that product and, or service, depends, into the field that is required in order to, for that product to come out to the market. So by working together, we build on their research skills and they also understand what was mentioned before, that STEM fields come together through arts and they understand how multidisciplinary usually STEM is. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think that's a good summary of what STEAM can be uh, and the value of role models in getting women and girls in STEM. Um, now, let's talk to Melly. Uh, and find out a little bit more about him and what he does. You're the work package, Meli, uh, an yeah. ombudsman for diversity and gender equality at Enhance. Enhance is very active in fostering women's participation in STEM, including through a recent STEM competition at the Women's in Tech Summit in Varsal. Did you come across a STEAM approach in any of these activities? And is this something that you try to integrate into your own work? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, to start with, I'm also not good at math, by the way, I have to say. <laughs> and coming to your question, uh, yes, empowerment, empowering underrepresented groups in STEM is one of the biggest uh, focus points, actually, in our alliance. And especially we focus on women's participation, uh, as we discussed today. And we are also very aware of their underrepresentation, uh, especially in higher academic levels. I mean, this is a picture that we see in all member universities of our uh, alliance, and it's everywhere in Europe. And uh, what we do is that we design in all our joint alliance activities, especially with a big focus, gender and diversity aware. And we also monitor these activities on gender balance. And after being active as an alliance in two years, I can say we have uh, monitored more than 1,000 participants and we can uh, 
talk about a 49% uh, female participation so far. So it sounds quite gender balanced so far, uh, but it's not enough. We know it. We still have to do a lot. And that's why we also organize, for example, this STEM competition that you have just uh, told. And uh, it was a competition with high school girls from our partner universities. And we welcomed them in, uh, in Poland, in Warsaw, uh, at the uh, Women in Tech Summit last June. It's just a couple of months ago. And for them, and also for us as organization, it was a great exp experience uh, to attend this largest tech summit for women in Europe. And the finalists, the final finalist girls of the competition used their creativity in the best possible way. Uh, they were free to choose their topics, they were free to choose their methods, and uh, I think this, is, this was a very good approach to uh, attract them and uh, listen to their solutions. And we also invited the winners to visit, to visit one of the enhanced universities of their choice. So it was kind of next step to attract them and to keep them warm uh, in, this, uh, in our university's uh, study fields. And from the contact that we have with these girls, actually we know that most of them also decided to start a STEM uh, study uh, in when they are so far. So because they were just 16 years old, 17 years old. So now they are making the decisions. I have to say also one more thing. We also reached out to those girls with fewer opportunities. So we did not do this whole competition uh, only for all girls. We also defined, we want to reach those with fewer opportunities, like European Commission in Erasmus Plus defines people with fewer opportunities. And so some of them, you can imagine, had not even been abroad uh, uh, outside of their countries, just to uh, also emphasize that aspect. And of course, we will continue our efforts in this field. And I, I noticed in our activities, uh, what works best is also that bringing people together in real life, it really makes the biggest impact basically on them and on their choices for the future. Thank you very much. That's, I mean, that's true that real world experience, uh, making it real and connecting it to other topics, that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Is to really get a feeling that STEM is not something you study on paper, on a whiteboard or on a screen, uh, but it's it's every day in, your, in the world around you. Thank you very much, Melly. Now you've just mentioned um, girls with uh, fewer advantages in life. Now, how can we ensure that actions that support gender equality in STEM benefit all women, regardless of their socioeconomic background, their ethnicity, or their personal circumstances? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, I think first we have to understand who we talk about exactly when we talk about uh, these groups. And of course, in the practice, we don't need to reach all women. We focus on intersectionality in our work. Uh, so it's important. Of course, there are women who are not disadvantaged or underrepresented in some fields. Uh, even in STEM, we can sometimes find them uh, or in our uh, uh, networks. But there are also groups, including women, of course, who face barriers that keep them preventing from participation at university activities. And Erasmus Plus, as you know, as uh, most of the uh, audience knows, defines quite clearly uh, the groups with fewer opportunities and the list of this group is very long. We know it, unfortunately. And that's why we need a mix of solutions and different measures to uh, reach out to them, to include them. And there are also lots of very successful women in STEM. And we also need these women, these young uh, women uh, as potential ambassadors and mentors for other young girls to inspire them. That is also has been just said actually by the previous speaker. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Melly. Yes, and, and I think um, that, that is something that applies to all levels of education. Of course, we're talking university uh, and we're talking early careers, but you can even look uh, at younger age in primary school or in secondary school. And that's something we do a lot with the STEAMIT project and the scientix efforts is that you can come up with STEAM is very valuable to promote hands-on activities that are accessible to everyone. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on that. Now, one final question. What are, what are the actions that are needed in the long term to sustain and foster women's participation in STEM careers? And more specifically, what's the role of university alliances and other umbrella organizations in supporting those efforts? Yeah, thank you. I think we can take a leading role in this as uh, European uh, university alliances. And uh, firstly, we need a good strategy, I would say, a good strategy uh, with strong pillars. And uh, what we do in uh, Enhance uh, is also a, a 
an attempt, of course, to have that strategy with these strong pillars. And what are they? Uh, mainstreaming diversity and gender equality is our biggest aim in our alliance. And gender equality is part of alliance per default. This is how we understand that. Our communication, the way how we communicate with our community within the universities, the member universities of the alliance, but also beyond, like these high school girls in the schools uh, of the cities where our universities are located. Uh, it is also very gender aware. We try to do this as good as possible to reach out to them. And we have the commitment of all, all our member universities in the alliance, also on the leadership level, very important. And we know that we can do it basically better together than alone as each university itself. It is like this uh, one plus one makes three. This is what we uh, believe in this and we experience. Uh, by being a good example, we want to be a role model for other universities as well, and basically also for other European alliances. And I would say another pillar is also an active outreach. Uh, we address girls at schools by organizing like that competition that I've just mentioned, but we address also staff at our universities uh, to make them aware of bias aware selection processes, because there is also a lot going on, uh, even when young girls want to come and enter the universities or uh, are in contact with universities, there are selection processes, we are aware of some uh, un, uh, uh, some un unawarenesses uh, about uh, bias uh, decisions in some ways. And we also want to start working on uh, peer to peer concepts like an ambassador program or a female mentoring program for more gender equality uh, in the STEM field. This is what we also uh, want to start. And last but not least, I think very important, uh, another pillar is we share our good practices in the alliance with each other, because there are also good projects, examples of good practices. We even went one step further uh, in our alliance uh, about sharing good practices and started a network with other European alliances already now, today, by sharing, because we know by sharing we can learn and develop uh, long-term solutions to have really a good strategy that also works at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Millie. Yes, th uh, thank you very much for um, that very good point, which is sharing good practice. Uh, it turns out that students need role models, but organizations, universities need role models as well. So sharing good practice and encouraging each other to do better is really the way forward. We see it every day in our work. We promote hundreds of exciting projects that focus on gender balance. And um, the more you promote them, the more of them show up. So that's very excellent news. Thank you very much. Uh, now, we will take a look or a closer look at business and industry. Kuse, thank you very much for being with us today. You are the Director General at Eura Technologies, one of the top three startup accelerators in Europe. In your view, how could the private sector, and particularly innovative startups, support women's participation in the STEM workforce? In your daily job, are you saying, are you seeing many women applicants? We are clearly far from gender parity in my world of tech startups. <laughs> so what we can do to change that, uh, I can say uh, that setting an ambition, uh, formulating an ambition already makes a big difference. Uh, last year, we had 15% of women in our startups. So it's like the average. At the beginning of the year, we set an ambition to double this percentage. But we have not changed the selection criteria and the selection juries have not been modified. However, the simple fact of having shared the ambition with the members of the jury allowed us to increase the percentage of women to 25%. So from 15% to 25%. Of course, we are very pleased with this. However, I must also tell you, because I attended the different juries, that women are on projects with less tech content than average. They are very present on a retail e-commerce vertical, but very less, very little on like robotics or fintech subjects or cybersecurity objects, subjects. So it's far from perfect, 
we are, we are still happy with the progress we made. Well, uh, I think there's definitely something to be happy there. Going from 15% to 25% is quite the achievement. But it's, it's true, and what you're saying turns out that um, that's where the STEAM approach is important because clearly you're still seeing that the less technical jobs uh, are more attractive to women. And that's based on the biases that we all, we all experience, they all experience in school. So I think that's a very good point for STEAM is that going into the A, you'll get to learn a whole lot more about the S and the T. And that's very, very important. Now you've mentioned that you were only seeing 15% uh, or so uh, in startup uh, applications. In Europe, only 15.5% of entrepreneurs are women. Now, can you share with us a success story on promoting gender equality and attracting more women at your organization? How can actions at a local level and at the educational level make a difference? Yes, as a startup accelerator, we think we have a special responsibility. We believe we can contribute to facilitate young girls' access to STEM studies, give them the, 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 the envy and acculturate them to take jobs. And so our actions are uh, local. Um, so in addition to our startup accelerator activities, we have two kinds of impact activities. First, uh, we have workshops for children. Uh, during their school holidays, they can learn robotics with us. At the end of a workshop, uh, children have built a robot. And so in seven years, 4,000 children have already attended uh, this different workshop. So it's quite huge uh, at the local level. We have an almost perfect parity between boys and girls in these workshops. But however, in our robotics accelerator, almost 100% of the startups are men. So I hope that in the long run, things will change and will we'll come from this children parity to uh, something close to a parity in the accelerator when it's really about startups. We have a second action which targets teenagers, girls in secondary schools. Uh, we host an annual event called Numericaire and we welcome each year between 300 and 700 school girls to introduce them to the job, to studies related to tech. I don't have figures to judge whether the actions are already uh, giving more girls in these uh, STEM studies. However, I think we contribute, uh, we do our duty to, to do the acculturation and promote tech jobs and tech universe uh, towards young girls. Thank you so much. It's great to see that, you know, people take on great leadership in, in really promoting gender balance, because it's not something that will happen on its own. Uh, but our biases are a key challenge there. And I see it in my day in my daily work. Uh, we organize a lot of workshops with scientists on gender bias and how to overcome them. And what I've seen is that people are willing to be part of this conversation. And it's thanks to people like you, Kuse, who take leadership on this, uh, that we will get there in the future. Um, talking about business, I just want to find out a little bit more about what your idea of, so you have your own actions, but what are the key actions for startups and businesses to attract young, young talent uh, for, from STEM education into the private sector? I think these uh, talents are not easy to recruit because they are less. Uh, you, we, this is why we are here. But I think that a startup or a, a company, once they, they have succeeded, they must continue their parity efforts. Because if, uh, if the percentage of women in the workforce is too low, the risk is to, to have these girls living and uh, 
choosing to go to another company, being an isolated woman in a man's universe. It's, it works for some women with a fighting spirit, but it doesn't, it's, it's not a spirit shared by everyone. It's not an aspiration for everyone. So one of the first key success factors is above all to continue to recruit and, and to seek parity. So it's a, it's a never ending task. Thank you very much, Crusade, for um, sharing your insights on this. And thank you to the three of you uh, for answering those questions and really helping us um, to find new ways to work together uh, to a more gender equal future. Now it's going to be time to take a look at some of the questions from our audience. So they might be popping on the screen. Here we go. So top questions. Um, how can you deal with resistance or lack of support in addressing gender equality in STEAM. Uh, so let's look at the second one. Will female limited, pro it's moving, it's moving too much. Okay, let's focus on the first one. How can you deal with resistance and lack of support in addressing gender equality in STEAM? So let's take it to our panelists. And uh, let's start, let's, is there anyone who wants to raise their hands or should I call names? All right, then, I'm calling names. Uh, <laughs> let's go with Panagiota. What do you think? How, do you, how can you deal with the challenge? OK, um, it depends where your resistance comes from, to be honest. Um, I was thinking that as, as first, um, just to answer it more clearly. It depends where resistance comes from. Is it the leadership of a university, of an organization? Is it from um, the audience that we would like to mobilize? Is it a, it depends. But I assume that um, this comes from perhaps leadership of a university of, 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 an, or of an organization, I'm sorry. Um, I will, I will, I think resistance is most of the common challenges when it comes to social change in an already established institution. This is uh, common, however, um, I think what we have worked, even in, in my case, when I work at the Cyprus University of Technology, uh, helping the other side understand uh, the challenge and the, the significant impact, negative impact that that has to our uh, research excellence, to our um, product as a university, what, our, what is our outcome, then it's easier for them then to understand why such change is necessary. Um, so I will, I will stuck with the um, part that it's important to help the other side understand. All right. So it's about building bridges and understanding where the exactly. problem comes from. Uh, Millie, do you have an opinion on that topic, on that question of overcoming uh, anything? Maybe very short. Uh, I. Uh see the topic of change management in this how do we challenge that is very much connected how do we organize this change because we want to reach a change we want to have an impact and we are doing it actually already now when i look at this what do we do we do it on several tracks it is nothing it's no it's not a process that is just one line so there is no recept for uh, no solution for all so we are doing top-down approaches but we are also doing lots of bottom-up approaches it's a mix of different measures uh, and some examples have been set by all three speakers today. I think at the end, the mix and the power of this mix is very important. How we uh, deal, uh, deal with, with this challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mili. Um, Kuse, any final comment before we look at another question? Anything you'd like to add? Yes, I think that uh, nobody, if I, there are almost nobody that is against the gender equality and inclusion, but just people are focusing on other stuff that is uh, that are keeping them very busy <laughs> about uh, keeping their business keeping uh, their projects so we need to to remind them about uh, how important these stakes are and encourage uh, projects that are promoting this uh, these subjects thank you very much Puse. Uh, so let's work together then and, and make sure that everybody's on the same side. Let's have a look at a second question from our audience. 
So let's have a look at the ta -ta -ta -ta. second one. What is the idea of the manifesto for gender inclusive STEAM education? Okay, now let's let's talk about that later then, I think, because um, I think there will be more to say there in a minute. Uh, are there initiatives to avoid the leaky pipeline once women reach STEAM education so that they develop careers up to heads of labs, companies, uh, universities? So leadership and taking senior positions. Of course, we can get women into STEM, but how do we get them to move up the ladder? Let's uh, ask our panelists. Let's move the other way around this time. Let's shake things up a little bit. Kuse, do you have an opinion? Uh, yes, I think uh, it's about uh, being able to recruit in quantity and to keep women because we because we have the same challenge also for diversity. It's uh, it's the same if you are isolated and uh, there are not enough people from diversity, not enough people, not enough women. So you these uh, these per people leave the company and so you you never get uh, to have these uh, these people to to be at senior levels because you, you have to, to have some um, a quantity to be able to, to, to move uh, on the ladder. Um, so this is uh, one main challenge. And then I think uh, it's about uh, really about having um, the board, uh, having uh, conscience and uh, being able to prioritize this subject because as a, I think really in business you have so many things to be busy about. Uh, you need to, to have your figures at the end of the month, at the end of the of the of the of the year. So it's not that you are against. It's it's just that uh, you need to be able to 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 put it on your agenda and make it a priority. Thank you very much for this um, very good answer, Millie. Do you have an opinion on that? What? How do you how do you get women to move up? Uh, yeah, so when I look at the universities that we have in our alliance and the general picture in Europe, at least maybe two things come to my mind now. It's not complete for sure, but one is, of course, to give a woman a good and safe framework for sure. Uh, the rules, the flexibility in rules, for example, uh, when they leave the university, can they come back again? So they should be able to come back again for whatever reason they move or uh, leave the university or just stop their research career, for example. We have also the same problem in the higher levels of academic research that this leaky pipeline comes and then suddenly there is this, yeah, there is a male dominance. And of course, some frameworks do help. We know it also in the last years because the universities are really investing uh, a lot in this, uh, in making it better. So another example from that thing is also from that uh, framework is maybe also there is lots of support from family planning, also for, for family issues, uh, lots of flexibility. I see also in our member universities, they have their own uh, uh, consulting offices uh, helping uh, women in research, in academic uh, careers, uh, when they leave uh, their job for a while during their pregnancy or a while after that. Uh, so there are really good and even um, it's getting better uh, family services, for example, to keep them uh, so that they feel motivated to come back again. Uh, so it's Thanks. a slow process, but it is going on, I would say. Okay, thank you very much, Melly. Uh, now I'll just have one final short question for you. Uh, in just a few words, what is the key, the one commitment, key action that you propose for this team manifesto? Let's go, uh, let's go, Panagioda. Of course. The one key one. Um, so one action that I will suggest to address, uh, it's directed to universities. In my opinion, the role does not start the moment a student enters their first year of studies. It starts from primary school, so I suggest to get academic staff outside of the university box and have them as to act as mentors and role models for students and particular girls who need to meet Thank STEM you. fields and understand that studying STEM, what studying STEM means. Okay, that's a very good point. Kuse, what should the manifesto that, uh... cover? Yes, I would say that for this manifesto, we must say high ambition. Uh, ambition drives results, and this is what we experienced at uh, Euratech on disparity subjects. So let's be ambitious. 
Thank you, Ambition. And Nelly, do you have one final comment? One word, maybe? Yes. Uh, I, I have to say, go to these girls and young women. Send your ambassadors to share inspiring stories and to be a role model. Inspiration and role models. Thank you very much to the three of you, to the four of you for joining today. It's been very, very inspiring and very interesting. The discussion does not end there. We will take your opinion and it's going to go straight into the manifesto. Uh, soon, the European Union will throw a survey in October. We'll launch a survey, the Commission, in October to get your ideas and your feedback. So keep an eye on the policy page for gender equality in research and innovation, uh, and you will be able to find extra resources, and you will be able to answer the survey very, very soon. Thank you, everyone. It's been my great pleasure to moderate this event, and I look forward to what we can do together. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. So welcome back. A lot of uh, information in those parallel sessions, also talking about culture in the plenary. Uh, a lot of information. And now we're focusing uh, on education and academia here at uh, uh, EU R&I Days 2022. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, upskilling and empowering youth, uh, connecting researchers with uh, startups to drive new ideas to market. Um, and then at noon, CET, we're going to meet, greet, and follow uh, the EU uh, mission uh, boards. Now, with all that information, let me give you a little, a few more pointers again. Go over these tech, uh, tech tips, uh, housekeeping tips. Um, with these live sessions, there is that chat button. You can be chatting during uh, the live sessions. The workshops, we've got more workshops coming up. Uh, lump sums and unit costs at uh, 1500 uh, her, um, yes, yeah, that's at noon, sorry. And then at 1500 CET, uh, writing Horizon Europe proposals. Uh, that might be bewildering to you. You know what? So you should go on the uh, village button and uh, uh, set up a meeting with a policy officer who can walk you through some of these questions you might have, these concrete questions on participating uh, in Horizon Europe and these, and these other programs. Book a one-on-one, -on -one, find out more, talk with a policy officer about that. Uh, you can also see more about the, the missions uh, through the exhibitions button, if you look there on your uh, platform. That platform, leverage that thing to your benefit. There's a lot of stuff to find out uh, on the platform. Also, the Horizon magazine, link at the bottom. Uh, and networking. This is uh, Networking is so important during these uh, events like these. Um, look up in the participants section. You can see the button up at the top, participants. Look somebody up you're trying to find, and then go to the uh, messages page to contact them also for a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, yeah, and also keep in mind the hashtag RIDaysEU. So uh, let's uh, move on then uh, to these, uh, these parallel sessions, and we'll see you in a bit. See you later.